Hey Gemini and thank you for joining me and welcome to this reading for December 2016. If you look in the sidebar here, I am picking these cards for your general reading and for your love reading today. Um, so we will get to that in just a sec. We'll take a look at the astrology now. The astrology is a quick overview of the astrology this month. So if you are interested in more detail, check out my morning live log at 8 a.m. Pacific. That's always taped so you can catch it that at a time that's good for you, okay? So the first transit that we want to talk about is Mercury moving into Capricorn in your 8th house. The 8th house governs the following things. Death, it covers change and endings, as well as sex and it covers other people's money, so resources coming in, in for you. The significance of the transit of Mercury in this house is that it's going to join Pluto pretty quickly, and so through that initiate drastic change as Pluto is the ruler of the 8th house. So you'll be seeing this kind of periodic uh, influx of change or an increase of change in your life every year while Pluto is here in your eighth house. So total transformation for you again. Venus will move into your ninth house, which is philosophy. Now Venus and Mars will be in the same house for a couple weeks. Um, so we're looking between December 8th and December 19th. This is a wonderful period for you to travel and to kind of explore the world at large. Also, if you can't travel in the physical plane, you can talk to your loved one about philosophy and those kinds of things, and that will be very stimulating, stimulating for you. So the next uh, major kind of aspect that's going on this month is a full moon in Gemini, which is your first house, your personality house. This is allowing you to transform your personality if needed or reap the benefits of the changes you have made so far. Full moons are always culminations or transformation opportunities. The moon is actually aspecting several different planets in really fortuitous signs for your relationships that day. This is a aspect called the mystic rectangle and it's a very supportive energy of two sextiles and two trines. I'll explain more on uh, the morning show but we are aspecting the 11th house which is friendship, the 7th house which is partnership, and the 5th house which is romantic relationships. So you're really all go for this full moon in terms of branching out and connecting with loved ones. The Mars, the Mars, <laughs> will move into Pisces on the 19th of December. This is a time for you to heal your career. So if there's any problems that you are working through um, in your career or about uh, focus on your career, this is a wonderful time to move ahead with those things. Don't put these things to action too quickly. Mercury will go retrograde on the 20th of December and you'll have several weeks in order to kind of lay low before you actually let people know your plans. On the 21st, the sun joins Mercury in Capricorn in the 8th house. Again, this is going to initiate more transformation and even more so on the 28th when we have a new moon in Capricorn in your 8th house. So you're sowing seeds for new beginnings. You might even have new sexual opportunities come through or you're laying the foundation for those to happen in your life. The last aspect that we want to focus on is Uranus in Aries in your 11th house will go direct. Your relations with friends and associates are going to become much more clear, straightforward. You'll figure out what's going on with whom and how. So you'll be getting along with your friends and social relationships much better after the 29th. So here are here is a regular spread for uh, the following month. I call this the wish spread because it is the holiday season. So I want you guys to really put a wish in your heart and kind of have a see if this kind of answers it. This is not the relationship reading or the love reading. This is actually just a general overview. So just take the messages in a general sense. But a few of the signs have had a very loving kind of month so far. So expect the same for you. So here is your message from the Tarot of Gaia Dreams. The first message is the King of Fire. So the King of Fire is an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius man. He has a great amount of energy. This is fire and fire. This is someone who's becoming very important in your life. He is a messenger for you. He is a friend. Some of you might be forming relationships uh, with someone like this. If you are, look for a Leo more so than a... Uh, well, maybe a Sagittarius. I mean, Sagittarius is your um, seventh house, so that could be good for partnership. 
Um, I kind of see the potential with a Leo better or maybe even, yeah, so fire signs are good for you. They create sextiles, new doors, and new opportunities. I would suspect, though, that this person is a friend of yours in some way uh, because the 11th house Aries, uh, Uranus going direct, maybe some friend is coming through giving you support, encouragement on something that you are working through. Your focus this, this uh, month is definitely going to be career and then also your partnership if you have an established partnership. Also sexuality is highlighted this, this month as well. So here is your next card. We have the Butterfly Maiden of Transformation. Of course, this coincides with all those transits in your eighth house of death and transformation, including Pluto, Mercury, and the Sun. You are experiencing enormous change right now, which brings great blessings. So wonderful. Also, Venus will be in your eighth house until, um, until December 8th. So you will have this kind of sexual kind of drive around you and a propensity to have a very robust loving sex life at this time. The next mess the first message here from the Mary L tarot is the Hierophant. So the Hierophant represents learning and this speaks really strongly to Venus and Mars in the ninth house of learning. The Hierophant uh, is responsible for institutions as well, uh, collectivism, um, joining together with others in order to uh, to propagate an idea or belief system. Uh, this could be education to do with school. This could be marriage for some of you, partnerships. The sun will be in Sagittarius until the 21st of December, so that is your seventh house of partnership. This can also represent Taurus people coming into your life and, and giving you quite a bit of significant input into how to manage things and how to get through things. Right now, you're really thinking about coming together with others around topics and ideas. I think you're ready to push forward in a healthful way with regard to your career and you want to join together with others based upon the ideals that you share. So kind of blending together moral beliefs or moral uh, decisions um, based around the things that you want to achieve and work with others in order to uh, bring those things in for yourself. The next card is so here we have the world card. Wow, big cards for you, Gemini. The world card has come up in this position already. So this is a card of success. It's saying that the transformations that you are going through are going to be successful, that the changes that you are making are important, and you should keep going in the direction you are going. I think that when you get a strong card like the King of Fire, this represents fire and fire. So fire energy in a fire sign. And so um, therefore you have this high energy pe person or people who are supportive of you at this time. Gemini, King of Fire could be you. Um, this doesn't necessarily coincide with only the sun sign. We all take on these qualities at different points and times in our lives. The King of Fire represents this individual who in some way um, pushes forward with his ideals and his ambitions and is very confident through spirit that what he's doing is right. This really strongly coincides with the Hierophant, who is a spirit-based card, also uh, concerned with dogma, concerned with the rule of law, and is the entry point into the abyss, okay? So the world is promising success in this direction. It seems like a lot at once, especially with these transformations that are happening, but work, work within that energy and you will, will find success and you will persevere. The last card that we have is the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups represents a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. This can represent someone bringing you an offer or having something that they really cherish to present to you. For some of you, that will be a relationship. For others, that will be information that is great value to you. This will help you with the transformation and help you contextualize all the things that are happening around you in your life. The next card here is from the Dreams of the Tarot of Dreams, sorry. So here is your first message. We have the Hermit. The Hermit stands for Virgo. And so um, we have a lot of trumps right now. I'm a little blown away. I think that there is an emphasis on uh, cathartic coming together, cathartic joining of souls and connections and moving forward in new directions. The next message is 
the palace of coins so it is up to you to build a successful home and kingdom i think that i i kind of glossed over virgo here a little bit but the hermit represents a time to focus on what your ideals are and which groups and associations you actually align with so this is kind of a community building um, card as well that's associated saying we believe this come join us and participate so this card is encouraging you to make your decisions and you're going to have to spend some time in December figuring out what transformations you're going to take to move forward you have this reservoir of energy through you to apply in different directions and I think that um, in some way you are uh, reflective upon that power and really mindful of how you use it and where you direct it. There is some opportunity for you to travel. Both Mars and Venus are going to encourage that. I think the Palace of Coins represents uh, mostly the domain of discs. So this is saying that a lot of this has to do with money. It has to do with physical wealth or physical well-being. And that's something that is a priority for you throughout the whole month. The next message is the Two of Wands. And so the Two of Wands tells you about perspective. I think these t these four cards coincide more closely and then this steps in. So I think that you are really laying a foundation here with these four cards and then these two step in as an interjection. Somebody comes into your life, offers you information, fo offers you insight and opens up your mind and gives you a perspective on new opportunities that are there for you. I think that's where you leave off the month and the year. So I think that at the end of the year you will be looking at a couple different options that I don't think you were quite conscious of at the beginning or middle of the month, but by the end of the month, those will come into focus and you'll be kind of left with some type of idea to toy around with or figure your way through. The next message is from the angels. So here we have a message of purpose. So Hierophant often coincides with the idea of purpose. The Hierophant is dogma. It's religious dogma. Or it's other types of dogma, belief systems, belief structures, what's okay, what's not. And so sometimes when we reach out to uh, institutions, religion is, religious institutions or the like, they present us with a purpose. If you believe this, then this is your purpose. This is how things are going to work out. And so you are deciding on which purpose you're going to choose this month and what you believe to be true. Geminis are known to be quite flexible in the way that they conceive of things and they think things through very thoroughly. And then finally, when they settle on something, everybody's like, okay, this is your belief structure but a Gemini is always happy and willing to revisit what they believe until they make their final decision but that usually takes years and years and years the next message is the card of the angels transformation didn't we see transformation here so this is really um, really signaling in a strong way that what your home is what you uh, associate to be your home, what you associate to be your kingdom is changing very rapidly and quickly. You're moving from one state into another and uh, possibly literally moving from one state to another. I think that was a channel, channeled message. But I think that also you're transforming who you are in the world and what your home is like in the world. So there's a huge element of you transforming and being supported by the King of Fire in doing so. So there's quite a bit of energy of in support of your ambitions and in support of your goals. The next message is peace. So when you achieve this kind of... Um, certain set of decisions that you make, where you orient yourself and what you transform to, you will elevate your mindset to uh, the position of peace and equity and balance. And so through that, you will you will have had your perspective adjusted by the Knight of Cups who introduces you to some idea, who gives you some perspective, who says, come on now, make that decision and go through one of these pathways because this is your future and you need to embrace it. So it's a very peaceful ending, very nice end to the year. I think that the majority of the work starts in the beginning of the month when you feel like you have an agenda to figure out. And then when you make those changes in mid-month, by the end of the month, you're just relaxing, coasting, probably spending time with family and friends, maybe even beginning some type of love relationship here. But I feel as though if you are then maybe it's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, easygoing, not very involved 
interaction, okay? And then by the end of the month, you'll definitely be ready to move forward in a particular direction that you feel comfortable with. By the way, Two of Wands is represented by Mars in Aries, and so Mars will be moving into Aries very shortly in January, so look forward to that. So you're really laying the foundation for that. This reading can actually overlap to that period, so maybe this is lasting for Mars in Pisces, and when Mars moves into Aries, then this is when the signal is for your next step in your transformation, okay? So why don't we take a look at your love reading? Um, it's re a really beautiful reading. So far, they've gone really well. I'm reading the Mutable Signs last this month, so I've already gone through a lot of the other signs, and so yeah, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> also, you guys have asked me to play my chimes a little bit more so I did pull them out and I have them here so if you guys don't mind I'll just play a couple notes for those who like it Okay, so this reading is a love reading, and I hope that you guys like it. I designed this reading. I, I, I did look online, and there are probably some similar spreads, but I did make this up for the show. You guys have been so wonderful in your support of me and this channel. There's been so much going on with the channel and YouTube all year this year, and those of you guys who helped me, who supported me through all the changes and transitions, you guys are more than amazing. I appreciate every single one of you. One of the main questions that I get is, can you do a more explicit love reading? I believe all my readings are love readings because they're all about love in general, but probably more from the Neptune perspective, the high octave love. So now we're just bringing it back really into the soulmates, twin souls kind of perspective so that those of you who are looking for a more explicit relationship reading get your fill. So I was... I, was, I hope that the last reading for the year fulfills you and brings you to your loved one. This reading is good if you have a partner or if you don't know your partner yet, but the perspective is that you do have a partner out there somewhere, and this side of the heart represents their experience in your love, and this side of the heart is your experience. So I also picked three cards from three decks that I bought specifically for this December reading to give you guys thanks for the help and support you have given me. The first card is from the Universal Love Oracle, and I find these messages so centering. I'll be using these cards alongside the reading when I do the love reading in just a moment. The first message is miracles. So I think that for you, it's important to believe in miracles. I think the emphasis on religion that was kind of foreshadowed in the general reading uh, kind of sticks and is reinforced by this. I think this is a wonderful time for you to believe in miracles, believe miracles can happen. If something isn't working in the way that you had hoped it would or you you didn't don't believe in it then maybe uh, trust a little bit and throw caution to the wind allowing things to happen the next card is from Doreen Virtue's Romantic Angels another very positive deck the message of passion allow your heart and soul to sing with joy remember how I said that on um, that the month is going to be filled with a lot of transits in your eighth house eighth house has to do with sex so you know it's kind of funny to bring it up in a reading, but sex is a part of relationships and you have so many transits, especially alongside Pluto. Pluto is a very sexual planet, so Pluto in your eighth house overall is putting your mind on sex a lot and that there's nothing wrong with that. It's nice and healthful. Whether you know it or not, uh, whether you know your partner or not, passion is the key in your relationship this month. The next message and the final oracle card that I have for you guys is the Whispers of Ganesha. This is a new deck. I really encourage it. It depicts the Hindu god Ganesha that removes uh, obstacles and promotes health and uh, prosperity. The message from Ganesha is divine support. So 
it really supports, uh, it really um, suggests, the card suggests that you are being supported. This coincides with the general reading where we did have the Hierophant come through. The Hierophant is a card of divinity. It's the intermediary between yourself and God, so a minister or some type of religious figure sometimes. But here uh, Ganesha is saying that whatever it is that you and your partner are trying to do this month with regard to your love life, that is going to be supported by the universe. In this position, this represents the starting point in December where your relationship is at this time. This also represents if you don't know your ideal partner, this is where you both are at this time. Uh, kind of considering that lives coincide and this is a general overview of the starting point of your relationship whether you know your partner yet or not. The first message is love. So that's a wonderful message at this time. It's suggesting that you and your partner are in love. Um, this is also the card of Gemini, actually. So this is <laughs> really on point. Um, the six, This is the lover's card in other decks. And so this is an emphasis on family, really focused on family, coming together, bringing people in, having a nice time, connecting with people that you care about. So a wonderful start to the month. Now, these cards represent your ideals for your relationship with your partner this month, what you really hope to get out of the relationship and what you're willing to contribute. So here is your first card, Daydreams and Decisions. This is the Seven of Cups. Focusing in on what you want. I think that there's a lot of um, uh, push and pull between uh, ideals and decisions and imagination. So what is the illusion? What is the reality? This is something that you wish to exist and you're kind of reaching into that Neptune energy and really pulling it in and manifesting potential. You want your relationship to be dreamy. You want your relationship to have this kind of air of magic about it and support. You want to be swept away, frankly. I think you do. I think you want that kind of over-the-top um, relationship that's kind of asymmetrical and strange and yet works perfectly. It's a bit of a pipe dream because you can't actually maintain such a chaotic relationship for very long, but it's something that you can influence a healthy relationship with and really uh, go for it in another capacity. The next message is here. This is the two of wands. Spread your wings. This is the belief card. So you want your relationship to help you believe. You want your relationship to see new perspectives. You may want to travel at this time, especially with Mars and Venus in the same house, in the ninth house of long distance travel. So this might be an emphasis for you. In fact, it's funny and uh, funny that Mars and Venus are now in your ninth house because um, the North Node is about to move into your third house and the third house coincides with short distance travel and North Node talks about aligning your karmic destiny. So very soon you will be traveling a lot in short distances um, just for whatever else. So maybe not the large trips that you are hoping for, but maybe to neighboring cities or neighboring states or provinces for sure, depending what you conceive to be a short distance trip. Okay, so this is what your partner conceives or wants out of the perfect relationship. The first card is listen. This is the High Priestess card. One of my favorite High Priestess cards. She, to me, is just hypnotizing. I love her so much. Whenever I see her, I'm like, yes, she's wonderful. So the High Priestess gives insight and intuition. Uh, your partner or your lover wants uh, to know things on an intimate level through the relationship. Maybe they look to you to be the High Priestess and really hope for an oracle or someone who gives great insights into miracles and opening up doors and giving con connection to the divine, to your religious uh, God or deity that you believe in. The second thing that your partner wants out of the relationship is release. This is the death card. So this represents change and transformation. This is really um, on point with 
what's going on with uh, your eighth house, right? Because the eighth house is the house of change and we have a bunch of different aspects. I think four major things going on in your eighth house this month. That's quite a bit for one month. And so we see the release card saying your, your lover or your partner, your prospective partner is willing to take that change, wants to make transformation, wants to release old forms and embrace new things. I think that what they want and what they envision seems much more intense than what you are seeking out of the relationship. You're more, you know, kind of uh, collectivizing, you're, you're embracing and melding together the different things around you, whereas your uh, lover or partner is stripping away, rehashing, and then looking deep within. And I think that that might be a time in which that paradigm between the two of you is in some need of open communication about what the other needs. Now that makes sense, Gemini, because Saturn is in your seventh house of partnership. So this is a time when there's a lot of emphasis on, you know, um, there's a lot of emphasis on restructuring your partnerships and, and improving communication. Remember that everything that you work your way through is, is given divine support in your relationship. The next set of cards represent your next stage. So this is where we start. This is the next stage. So this is the upcoming kind of set of events or some more information about what you're about to experience. Message is detach. I, th I feel like your partner's energy is more intense than yours at this time. So your natural inclination may be to l detach and let go. You seem to be very light-handed and soft-spoken this month while your partner is like, I want this, I want cosmic connection, I want huge overhauls and transformation. If you don't know your partner, maybe your partner's willing to let go of their current relationships so that they can move closer towards you. So you might be feeling the anxiety on the back of your neck if you don't know your partner and saying, whoa, something's changing, I don't know what's going on. Maybe that's their life realigning to get them close to you in some way. So you're just chilling, you're maybe more ready in a certain way, but that energy could overwhelm you this month and you might choose actually to detach to maintain balance. Remember that the beginning point is so strong, the love card. <laughs> The, the the sixth arcanum, which is the lovers. So that, that bond and that soulmate relationship is already there and established in your life. It's just a matter of forming it together. The next message is for what your partner is doing next. This is the practical um, experience that they are about to experience and they're feeling alone. So this is a time for you to listen. It'll be very interesting to see what cards we have coming up here. But your partner may be biting off more, they can, more than they can chew. I really feel that these energies are somewhat overwhelming. They're somewhat over the top. They're somewhat, somewhat infiltrating. Can a person handle all this in one chunk of time in their relationship? So if they are making these transformations, if they are shifting things, they might alienate themselves quite a bit, especially from you, the person they love. And so you might choose to select balance for yourself. Remember, you're your own soulmate first and foremost. Everybody is else is secondary. And so step in to your own flow while waiting for that compliment, that, that second part of your soulmate relationship with yourself to be ready in some way and have patience and tolerance for their own processes. Here is the two modifying cards that kind of suggest what some advice and some information about how to get you to the end goal of the end of the month. So this is for you, Gemini. So the first message here is opportunity beckons. And so here we have the four of cups. So some, I would suspect that if you know your partner, they're going to reach out in some way. If you don't know your partner, there will be kind of um, serendipitous events coming into your life to guide you back in touch with them in some way. So there will be a cup offered. There will be something reached out, something that you will solicit your attention that will try to get you on board. The next message of advice is the th two of s seven of swords, sorry. So again, you're trying to look beyond the surface, but not in the same intense way that your partner is. I think you're just curious. A great thing to do with these kinds of cards here is if your partner is not available in some way because they're caught up in something at this time, 
to provide you with the deeper knowledge that you're seeking in your relationship, reading books on topics that stimulate the mind will really help and facilitate for you some type of perspective on things. You don't always have to force other people into your agenda. I think doing so too much is actually a part of codependent relationships. And so it's healthy boundaries to understand that, you know, it would be nice and it's nice when it works, but being dependent upon and forcing other parties to uh, kind of secede to your agenda is never really that helpful. And in fact, you have to trust that the divine will support you in the directions that you are taking and the divine will lead you to where you are going. And remember, the opportunity beckons. I feel as though for you, you have some type of trip or some type of kind of call to action that is soliciting your attention. Maybe this month between you and partner, only passion will reign and not embrace that and embrace that kind of state of hibernation where the mind is working less and you maybe the body's working more who knows remember also that this card came up and these cards are really significant at the end of the day the miracles expect miracles to happen and how do miracles happen miracles happen when we've given up on hope when we've given up on the regular way of doing things when we no longer believe that the regular way that things are flowing are possible so expect this month some type of interjection that can be a miracle that can be transformative that can give you perspective and help you see the deeper truth in things I think your partner, just so you know, is struggling way more than you are this month. This really helps uh, people to gain perspective and empathy for their situation. This might be a hard pill to swallow because I think, I don't think your partner's being easy on you. I, I don't think that they're essentially helping you or like, you know, they're not a lost little lamb. It's almost like the wolf has stabbed their toe and now is limping around. So this isn't necessarily like through weakness that they are experiencing this challenge. It's because they pushed the envelope and because they have tried to uh, change things up a little bit forcefully and now they're living with the consequences. And part of being a good partner is allowing room for that to happen while still being there in a certain way. The next message is advice for them to get for to point A to point B. Definitely encourage your partner to watch this video with you so you can share the information together. Another way you can use this information is to support your partner throughout the whole month and understand where they're coming from. And so the first message is choose your battles, seven of wands. So that's probably a big part of the lesson of this month in general. Maybe that's the miracle that you need. Maybe your partner's fighting you fighting with you at every uh, twist and turn and you just need them to figure it out take a step back and also uh, make a direction towards selecting the battles and with the with the mind frame of wanting to win the war rather than winning every single battle encouraging them to kind of in some way adjust the way that they approach things. I think that this feeling alone in this month your your partner will in some way learn their lesson so you don't have to beat them over the head with your input or your perspective although sometimes that helps. I, I see you as really removing yourself to create balance for yourself in the relationship right now and allow those new things to come into your life and when you've cultivated them then you can bring it back into the relationship. Well your partner's doing something slightly different. They're they're on a really deep agenda addressing something and I think that they push the envelope and then they learn a lesson about putting pushing too hard and then they're gonna have to realign how they do things. Not necessarily who they are but how they do things. So that will only help your relationship as well because you won't have to fight them at every single turn. The second set of information or advice is the throat chakra. So again, I feel as though your partner, like I said, not a lost lamb. I think, you know, your partner's saying things. And I think that Geminis have the tendency to be provocative. You guys have the sense, uh, the opportunity or the ability to kind of provoke because you have a very open-ended mind, a mind that always searches and questions things. So what's going to happen? You're going to attract people who have that as well. And in some ways, they don't, they aren't Geminis necessarily in some cases. And if they are, then the, all, all the merrier and more on point with this card. The message is here about how we communicate, how our 
um, throat chakra operates, how it brings information forward, and how it contextualizes and realizes thought form. So I think that your partner's being given a certain amount of things to mull over, and your best bet is to allow them to mull it over. I think that there's no lapse in passion, however, and a lot of this communication will happen indirectly through sex or through other types of physical connection and passion. Maybe even through food, even cooking food for each other. If you don't know your partner, this is what they're figuring out and this is what's stalling them from coming to meet you. So the faster and the more loving energy that you send to them, even though you don't know them yet, the, the quicker they can figure it out and make their way to you. Let's see what the last card is for the end of December. This is the outcome for your relationship with your partner by the end of the month, regardless if you know them or not. Helpless and hopeless, the Eight of Swords. So I think that by the end of the month, you guys are going in two different directions. I don't like the way this card is named. Um, I think that this the picture is really on point for the meaning of the card. However, there is a sunrise and you have to figure out which way you're going to go. So it's a tentative card. It's not a card of, you know, big solutions by the end of the year. Everything's tied up with a pretty bow. I think you're being presented with some issues and things to work out. Maybe your life is taking one direction and your partner is kind of working their, their stuff out on the other side that can be very hurt hard for a relationship as you guys push in different directions but remember the divine support and solicit the divine support of uh, of the universe and of all the gods that you subscribe to believe in miracles believe that this is happening for a positive purpose there's a lot of mind work that's going on here lots of thoughts and ideas so really embrace those and uh, believe that they're happening for you for a good time for a good reason. The Eight of Swords has a lot to do with knowing that there's a goal but not necessarily seeing what it is yet. So I don't think you should feel so desperate and I would ignore the the title of this card in this case. I don't think this is helplessness and hopelessness. I think this is a, light, a lack of perspective and a, a lack of foresight with regard to exactly what's going on. I think you guys are, it's almost like being put in the middle of a city that you don't know without a map and without a compass and trying to find each other in that city you know, just walking around. So it's, it's that feeling of how am I going to do this? There's, I don't have a phone. I don't have any point of reference, but at some point you're going to figure out ways to connect or some, you know, maybe you'll find an internet cafe and send an email. There are practical out of the box solutions. It's just a matter of time before you figure what they are out about. And I think at the end of the month, you're going to be left with that kind of feeling half afraid that you're not going to figure it out. Like, what am I actually going to do about this? Or, and then half kind of, okay, maybe I'm kind of stuck now, but there are steps that I can take and ultimately I will find a solution. So it's like, I don't know what it is yet, but I'll get there. It's that scientific thinking, the eight of swords for me. Anyway, Geminis, you guys have given me such a wonderful 2016. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Thank you so much for everything. I hope you and your families have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, you guys. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in 2016. Take care. Bye.